Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Nintendo Fanboys! And we're probably going to be doing Fanboys now for the foreseeable future because Steven has a Switch coming day one and uh, he's going to give us all his impressions and everything like that, I'm sure. You stole my thunder day. <laughs> I knew I, it! I knew it! I, I always said from like a few months ago that you were going to have it day one and now you're just Throwing that in my face. I am. Killing my lines. Damn it. That's right. You so, uh, what have you been up to? What's going on? I'm playing two games right now. Uh, Dragon Quest Eight. I'm 30 plus hours in right now. I believe I'm near the end. Uh, I think I have to go see the High Priest, which I think I now have the ability to do, and... I think he's going to get murdered, and then maybe a few more dungeons, and then the boss, but I don't know. Maybe I'm like 15, 20 hours still, uh, so who knows? No, I don't think so. I think you're more like, I think it's probably going to be like um, around 10 hours left, something like that. Yeah, I just decided, like, if I want anything done, I, 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 I'm not going to do all the side quests. I'm not even trying to do all the pictures anymore. I just stop because... I want to get I want to get through this game before uh, Zelda arrives and other stuff arrives so and then I'm playing a little game called Horizon Zero Dawn. Oh, how did you manage that? Well, I got some contacts. And that's another one like I'm really uh, we we're, we're going to talk about that later even though it's a Sony game, we don't care. We're going to talk about that later and I'm doing the same thing with that as I'm doing right now. I'm barely doing any side quests because I want to with the limited time I have right now basically yesterday I was able to put in about four hours because I was off today so I went uh, to bed very late because I can only play when my son goes to goes to sleep so that's it's going to be challenging uh, from now on especially with a second one in the way uh, arriving soon so big games like this this is I heard it's a 30 to 40 hour game so I'm, I, I assume that if I cut all the side quests, I can maybe do it in 20. We'll see. But yeah, I'm, I'm going to leave my comments later on because so far it's quite an impressive feat. So that's pretty much uh, what's up with me. What about the, the master? Well, uh, to be honest, I'm doing the exact same thing. I, um, I'll save, obviously, the Horizon stuff, uh, impressions and stuff like that for after. But... Um, uh yeah, I, I'm still playing Dragon Quest Eight, but by playing Dragon Quest Eight, I basically put in about three minutes a day. And I'm not kidding. That's exactly what I do because I've unlocked. Uh, I'm right at the end of the Memories Lane, and I really need Jessica's ability uh, for Magic Burst if I want to beat the last couple of bosses. And I really don't feel like grinding. Um, grinding skill points so what i do is there are purple chests in each room after each one of the bosses and i've unlocked like 12 of the bosses or something like that or 11 of the bosses or whatever it is so i get 11 random seeds a day and that's literally all i do so i just i collect the seeds and then i shut the game off <laughs> and I download like the daily item or whatever. And I'm really perplexed with that. Um, for those that are playing Dragon Quest VIII right now, there were supposed to be daily items, and they were saying that there was going to be one weekly item that was like a, a, a good item or like a unique item. And basically all they gave us was the candy cane. And then everything else has just been random crap. And I mean, some of it is good, like a double bubble is good that doubles your experience in gold. Um, there's also been like skill seeds and stuff like that, but we've yet to get another really good solid, um, award or, or download item or something. And that's really perplexing because Erdrick's sword is supposed to be in the game. And I, I would love to be able to, to download that. I think that would be awesome. Um, I don't know what exactly it would do, but. I don't know. So I'm going to keep that up. I'm going to every day going to just download because literally downloading takes two seconds. And with the seeds, it's I'm just hoping for the random skill seeds so that Jessica can get to 100 in fisticuffs, which is what's necessary for her to unlock magic burst. Because without that, these last bosses, um, you just 
you, you can't. You, you need uh, abilities that affect everyone. Uh, like Kamikaze is really good. It'll it'll kill the hero, but it usually takes out two or three of the different uh, ads that like Jessica and other ones bring into play. Um, but there's just no way they're designed. Um, these boss battles are designed essentially for you to grind out all your characters so that you have like all the skills necessary and I just don't feel like doing that so instead I'm sort of cheating the system by just going randomly around grabbing those seeds and and you know depending on what they are putting them in my characters and then just shutting the game off and that's it downloading um this the item and then that's it so I'm still playing Horizon but again we'll get into that a little bit later but um uh, I'm going through now and doing all of the side content and whatnot, but I think it's important. I would like to actually talk a little bit about this because not about Horizon, but how you're playing. Because I found I found it hilarious. Um, for those that don't know, and this is really humorous, okay? Stephen and I, we both felt like morons here. Um, I truly, to be honest, I never really looked into this, um, and and you mentioned it. I don't, what was it like? Just like four days ago or something. Um, but basically, if you have a PlayStation 4, and I don't know if it works with Xbox or not, but with a PS4, you can set your console to something called primary. And basically what that means is it allows you to play whatever is on your PlayStation, whether or not you're online or offline. And then what you can do is you can go to a million different um, PlayStations, it doesn't matter, have someone log in as you with your account and your profile and everything as a secondary PlayStation because you can only have one primary PlayStation um, system. And with that secondary system, so long as you're online, and that's the catch, you must be online, you can play whatever is in that person's digital download library. So in our case... Um, from now on, Stephen and I simultaneously can play anything that Sony or anyone else sends our way for the PlayStation 4. And how we're going to do this is Stephen basically took my uh, username and password and, and activated a secondary uh, account, and I just removed the LAN cable from my PlayStation 4 so that I'm not going to do any downloads. Obviously, when he's finished the game, I'm going to plug it back in, download any updates and stuff like that. Um, but whenever we want to review a game that isn't out, from here on out, we can really have some very cool, interesting discussions. Um, I, I really feel bad that we didn't do this with Uncharted 4 because I think that would have been freaking awesome to have your opinion like the same day that I download the game, you can play it immediately. And we could do, you know, special podcasts. We could do uh, a joint review. Like there, there's tons of stuff that, that this unlocks. And the funniest thing is this has been in the PlayStation 4 since day one and we just never thought of that before. So moving forward, because the PS4 still has quite a few big releases left in it, um, I, think, I think we're going to be able to offer some really unique content moving forward. Yeah, and the thing about this is you, you've always wanted those codes for yourself because you wanted cap to capture footage. Exactly. But now you... You, we can do the, the opposite. I can give you my username and password and you can send me a game like MLB The Show, which yep. is, is more catered towards me. I'm a big fan of that. And I can review that and you can still capture footage. Yep. So this, like I'm a bit, not really surprised because we're incredibly dumb. But Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I thought of this this weekend. I thought of this and then I was like, okay, I'll mention this to Jared. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. Worst case scenario, we, we give it a try. I wasn't really sure if you were comfortable with giving me your password. Oh, like I don't that. I don't care, man, at all. But then as long as I set, like I said it so that my son cannot buy a game for you because he did that on my account <laughs> last uh, a week or two before he bought a game for me. So now I, I, I password protect everything. So I did the same for you because, of course, he probably would have done the same. But now this is really moving on uh, in the future. Like we'll, we'll have... This will improve our PlayStation content so much because, like you said, we'll be able to do dual reviews and dual vlogs or whatever the heck you want to call it. This will be amazing. So can't wait. Like, uh, what's Sony's next uh, next big game? 
Uh, like let's... there's Days Gone, which might be this year. Uh, I think Detroit is next year. Yeah. Like I, I, honestly, I don't even know. But I don't care. Like just like third party, third party sport. Like we, I got NHL last, last year mm -hmm. for some reason. So maybe some other companies will chime in and give you uh, some codes sometimes time. And if it's on the PlayStation, we're good to go. Yeah, man, I, I, I was super, super shocked when, uh, and what's funny for, uh, for everyone listening, like, you figured this out while I was at work, and I was like, okay, because originally you're like, oh, you know, like, you can set uh, the primary account and then secondary, and I was looking into this, and I was like, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, like, because that's going to get annoying, you know, like, if I, if I want to play something when I come home from work, then I have to tell you, you switch from secondary to primary and all this kind of crap. And um, I just did, I don't know, what, 10 minutes, I think, of research. And people online were like, no, no, it's all good. You just, uh, you keep yours as your primary and just don't play online while you want your friend to experience the game. And I was like, really? Like, is it, yeah. is it really that easy? <laughs> because I, I only recently like, uh, made my PS4 my primary PS4. I did not even know that was an option before. And what happened once was... Uh, we have power outages or internet problems often here, and I realized that I could not play my digital games, even though I was the only one with my account. So anybody has a PS4, make sure you put it as your primary. If you ever are in a situation when you, when you don't have internet, you can always play your digital games. And I don't want to dwell on this later, but this will bring us to a, a little subject that is on topic, is that uh Nintendo so far has no plans to allow something like that. Like they are saying that uh, Switch that you buy uh, digitally, Switch games that you buy digitally will be locked on one console. So yeah. this again sucks for uh, for the general public. It's not that big of a deal because like it's like this really what we're doing is fun, but like it's I don't see how it uh, benefits some companies since basically instead of getting uh, $120, they're getting $60. In this case, they're not uh, they're not getting anything because it's a review copy. But let's say in the future, like I'm a cheap ass and you buy a game, like we can theoretically do this for all Ever. of our games. So yeah. basically, I can spend zero dollars for the rest of my life. So I don't know if this is really uh, beneficial to uh, companies, but still for gamers, there's no doubt that this is something that's a big bonus and unfortunately it doesn't seem like we're going to be able to do that on the switch and before i let you speak about that i just want to mention the other similar topic on the switch which is download size because the switch only offers 32 gigabytes of internal space and i think after all after the user interface and all that it comes down to around 25 or 26 yeah uh, some launch games in japan will you won't be able to buy them digitally unless you upgrade your card uh, that being said it's quite easy to upgrade those cards but still it's in a future where i know not everyone is popular with this idea but it seems like digital only is the clear future like even now every year sales are improving and it's never going to go down for digital it's only going to go up and I, maybe in 10 15 years we'll only have digital games nintendo is not putting themselves into a position where they can succeed here if they don't allow because not everyone knows how to upgrade their card or, and stuff like that. So if you can't buy more than a few games or like a game like Dragon Quest 1 plus 2, which is, I think, 32 or 33 gig, you cannot even get it digitally unless you get a new card. So I just wanted to get your thoughts on those two subjects. Um, I, there's actually one more thing. I don't know if you if you separated it. Yeah, that was that was the next. That oh, was okay, the okay, all right, cool. So I won't I won't mention that. I'll wait. Um, yeah, so uh, Dragon Quest Heroes one and two exactly, man, is like 32 gigabytes or something. So you can't even download that um, right away, which is I think ridiculous. Um, honestly, I, I really do. I think that's utterly ridiculous. Yes, I'm 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 you know I'm one of these guys. I do like some physical stuff, but um, for those that don't know, my Xbox One library, if you were to come to my house, you will never find an Xbox One game. That console is 100% digital for me. I do not own a physical disc of any Xbox One games. 
Um, it was the first time I've ever done that, where it was 100% digital. And I did that because it was just so easy to transfer files back and forth and, and it, for the convenience sake. Um, with, with Nintendo, so we got two elements here. We have one with the... Um, with the basically the onboard storage, and I mean, I get from a, a, a like I guess from a concept what Nintendo was doing, trying to limit the prices and this and that. But it's really hard to swallow this, you know. It really is when like flash memory is so ridiculously cheap. Um, and a funny coincidence here, Serena's father asked me um, if if I could pick up a micro SD card for him, which of course, like you're saying, right, about people just maybe not understanding how this works. I think people listening to this um, are, are not the right, I guess not the right audience, because the people who listen to this, you guys are all hardcore. I mean, come on, if you're listening to us, you're, you're a hardcore gamer. There's no question about it. But like uh, my significant other's father had no idea what tablet he got. He just got an upgrade to his phone, and um, I forget who he's with. I think it was like Rogers or Bell or, you know, one of these companies was like, oh, well, we're going to give you a, uh, a tablet. And so he was like, oh, okay, cool. So he calls me, and he's like, oh, um, uh, Jared, the, 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 the tablet is telling me... Well, first off, he doesn't say tablet. He says the iPad is telling me that uh, I need some sort of memory or, or something and his quote-unquote iPad was actually a Galaxy Tab E, <laughs> okay? And he had no idea what kind of memory card or even what a memory card is. So I Googled it and I found out, okay, it accepts micro SD cards. So I went online. Amazon had for $49.99 a SanDisk 128 gigabyte card for, like I said, for $49.99. And what does this have to do with the, the uh, I was just going to say the Wii, with the Switch? Well, 50 bucks, you know what I mean? Like $50 for a 128 gigabyte, that's Canadian. So like in American and US dollars, that's like 32 cents. And like, there's no way Nintendo could have not put something like that in there. I mean, really, truly, there's no way. I, I just find it really hard to buy that in today's day and age that you can buy a video game, a dedicated video game platform, and it only has 26 gigs of local storage after the operating system's on there. And let's not forget that Nintendo will update the operating system, so, you know, who knows how much more space that's going to eat up over time. So, no, I don't like that. I really don't like that, especially when I just bought a micro SD card, which is what I believe the Switch uses, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and I just find that kind of ridiculous. I, I don't understand. I spent 50 bucks for, for essentially my father-in-law's uh, whatever, Galaxy Tab E, I'm sure Nintendo could negotiate with these companies and get that down to like, you know, $10 or something with the amount that they're going to make. So I find that kind of ridiculous because they're not embracing the future. And yes, I get it. It's really not that big a deal to go and buy a memory card. But you know what? It's an added expense. And there are people who are just not going to want to do that. And I love how Nintendo's like, oh yeah, it's going to accept two terabyte uh, cards. Do you guys have any idea how expensive those are going to be? Well, and they're not even available. But when they are available, they're going to be like 300 bucks or something crazy like that. No one wants to do that. That's, that's ridiculous. And I understand they're saying now, like, oh yeah, well, you know, in time we're going to be able to... Uh, connect a, um, what are they called, uh, an external hard drive to it. Everything with this system feels so damn rushed, in time, in time. Well, we'll, we'll get there, eventually, and all this BS. So, whatever, I mean, that was that. So, uh, okay, what was the second thing? So, there was the internal storage, and what was the other one? Uh, games digitally are locked, one system. Okay, yeah, well, that, I mean, that's very similar to what Nintendo's done in the past. So, that doesn't really come as much as of a surprise. Honestly, I really don't think I would even care if it weren't for what you and I are doing right now and realizing the potential here. Like, there is real potential. If, if I was a kid right now and I discovered what, I, what you and I are doing right now, can you imagine how awesome that would be? Let's say we were like 10 years old and we're friends. Well, 
your birthday and Christmas, you could ask for games that the two of us would like, and we could actually play. Yeah, we wouldn't be able to play together, like co-op or, or multiplayer, but we'd both be able to experience double the amount of games, because you could ask your, your parents for a game, and I could ask my parents for a different game, and yet we both get to experience it. I think that's actually really wicked. Yeah, that's basically what I did as a kid, when you could just get like lend your game to others like when you have a physical copy that's one of the advantages that you can lend the game to others and i used to do that all the time as a kid that didn't have any money to spend so yeah i, I just imagine like uh, kids they don't really care about having the uh, physical copy so if especially if you're uh, miles and miles away like even if you wanted if if sony sent you like the game like they did with last of us in the ps3 you had to mail that to me yeah. So it's this is way more convenient. Yeah, damn right. Now, um there was a few other little things um related to this. Now I hope I'm not gonna touch on any of your topics. There were two little things I just wanted to add really, really quickly here. Pertaining to the onboard storage of the or memory of the uh, switch, and I'm gonna say we because I wrote it down, so I know I'm going to say that. I apologize for that. Um games don't actually have uh, installs, believe it or not. Um, just wanted an FYI, so you don't have to worry about that. Games apparently are going to work very, very similarly to the uh, 3DS. So you'll put your card in, and you're pretty much good to go. Now, that doesn't mean that there won't be patches and things like that. Uh, for that, Nintendo hasn't really said how that's going to work. I doubt very much the patches are going to save to the card. I think it's going to be... Oh, hold on, I will pause this. Well, it looks like the pause didn't really work. Uh, we only discovered this afterwards, but when Steven and I put together the podcast, essentially it went kaflooey after we returned. I should have just stopped the recording and then came back. So unfortunately, we actually lost like half an hour or so of our usual podcast. So instead, you guys are stuck with just little old Jared. And um, I'm going to touch a little bit upon uh, some of the stuff that we discussed. Um, the, one of them was the fact that I was just talking about the fact that um, games will not be installing to the Switch in the Switch's internal memory, sort of like the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One games do, which take up, you know, gigabytes and gigabytes worth of space. So you don't need to worry about that, which is good. The other thing that we discussed, which got lost in limbo due to audio syncing issues, which I'm going to repeat right now, is the fact that the virtual console will not actually be present during day one at launch. It will not be available. And this comes as no surprise to me whatsoever. Uh, this has actually been Nintendo's strategy for the last little while to rush systems out when they're not ready. So unfortunately, this sort of just seems like uh, the status quo right now that the Switch really is not ready. And there's been another issue that's popped up, which is the fact that the left Joy-Con appears to be having some syncing issues for whatever reason with the platform uh, itself, which is really, really strange. Now, for someone like me, I wouldn't actually even be using the Joy-Cons at home. I'd use the Pro Controller. But uh, anyways, it's going to be interesting to see if Nintendo can fix that with a firmware update or what's really going on. So those were a couple of the things that we discussed, and then we switched uh, gears to the topic of the day or topic of the show, which is, will Horizon affect Zelda Breath of the Wild's reception? And we both spoke a little bit about what we thought about the game, and both of us essentially think it's, it's really a masterpiece of design. The story is absolutely incredible. It's just a breathtaking game. And considering it's an action RPG itself, we were both curious is, is this actually going to affect Zelda's reception? Like, are critics going to be a little bit harder on the game? And not just critics, but fans themselves. Because I got to be honest, having finished Horizon and just such a breathtaking game that I'm really wondering how I'm going to feel about Zelda when I get my hands on it. Because Zelda's an open world action RPG, which is exactly what Horizon was. The thing is with Horizon, and this is actually my biggest fear with Zelda, is Horizon has such a living breathing world everything feels connected everything makes sense there's wildlife everywhere 
and I'm really concerned because of a lot of the gameplay footage that I've seen with Zelda, it looks relatively empty. And I'm wondering if that's going to have an impact because honestly, like if I go into an open world game right now after having experienced Zelda and it's not this living, breathing world, I gotta admit, I'm gonna be like, uh, what the hell is this? And so I'm really wondering if a lot of critics are going to feel the same. Now, embargoes are up and a lot of people have already been talking about Zelda and they're saying that it's like one of the best ever, but that's based on the first, you know, four hours or so with the game. I'm really wondering what happens when you hit like the 40 hour mark. So that was it. We were really both curious to see, will this have some sort of impact? Maybe it won't. Maybe nothing's going to happen at all. But both of us are sort of leaning towards, we have a feeling that this is going to affect Zelda's reception, both from a critical standpoint as well as from a gamer standpoint, because a lot of different people naturally are going to compare the two. And I will. When I review Zelda, of course I'm going to compare it to Horizon. How could I not? And finally, I ended off with my blast from the past, which, since it was my turn, uh, I talked a little bit about The Fireman. And The Fireman is a Super Famicom game that's really, really awesome. It's made by Ancient, the same guys that did uh, Clock Tower. And in it, it's basically... Uh, a game where you go around a building that I think it was like Christmas Eve or something like that that's caught on fire and you're trying to rescue people and set out, well, basically to, uh, what was I going to say, to cancel out the fires, put out the fires, that's what I'm looking for. And that's it. It's a really, really simple concept, really simple game, but it's an absolute blast. Unfortunately, it was never released in North America. It was only released in Japan and in PAL territories. You can pick up the Japanese one for relatively cheap, but the PAL version is just insane. I think it's like near $500 US or something crazy like that. So that was pretty much that, guys. Uh, we lost half an hour. I was able to give you another five minutes, but it's really hard to do without having Steven here, so we don't have that back and forth. But what I did want to talk to you guys about was our next podcast, because our next podcast, which would be going up, let's see, in like two weeks from now, should be our, I, I guess, almost our review of Zelda. Well, we're going to both talk a little bit about that. And uh, that's pretty much it. So sorry about that. This is a really short podcast for us. But uh, like I said, we had those audio syncing issues. So I had to basically redo this last portion. Anyways, everyone, I hope you're uh, all well. And we'll see you in two weeks. And don't miss that one because it's going to be awesome where we talk all about The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild.